Good morning and welcome on this first Sunday after Easter. Good morning. Um, if anybody knows how to use the conference room TV with an iPad, please talk to me. I tried yesterday and I failed with two people helping me. In your bulletin, with a little strip along the side that tells you what pages and so forth, if there are three asterisks, that means go to the back of the hymnal. Otherwise, the page numbers are in the front of the hymnal. If you're not a Lutheran, you don't know that, that that's really a two-book book. And the big numbers are the hymnals, the hymns in the back, and the small page numbers are in the front of the hymnal, in the front of the book. Live stream. Welcome to you all, and thank you, our team workers up there, busy getting things out, and thank all the people that are live stream. We've had a bunch of people, that, a whole bunch of people showed up on live stream on Easter, which was exciting to see, and we thank you for that. Council's looking for somebody that might help set up a Bible school this summer. If you're interested or know somebody that are, uh, let the council know. Let us now uh, turn to worship. Let us arise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. and defend us, gracious Lord.
back and do the confession and forgiveness of sins. This is the first time we have been doing this service, the two of us up here, without having the full service written out before us. So it makes it a tad bit more difficult. And so we will go back to the confession, and after the confession, we will sing the opening hymn. That's okay. Hey, we're all winging it today. <laughs> we have a book up here we've never seen. So, right. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people. Turning us from our sin to live for you alone, give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now we let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ has given to die for us. For his sake, God forgives us all our sins. So as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now we shall sing the opening hymn, which is number EL, ELW, uh, 386, and we're singing verses 1 through 4. Thank you.
seated and you hear the readings. The first reading is from Acts. When they had brought the apostles, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior, that he might give repentance to Israel and the forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> we will say the psalm responsibly. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me, hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord this has been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, O Lord, save us. We pray to you, Lord, prosper our days. Bless, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and has given us light from a procession with branches up to the corners of the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. The second reading is from Revelation. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come from the seven spirits who are brought before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds, Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel is in John 
in the 20th chapter. When it was the evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord, and Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hands in his side, I will not believe. So a week later, the disciples were gathered again in the house, and Thomas was with them. And although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand, put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen me and have yet come to believe. For now Jesus did many signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The gospel of peace and the Lord. Amen. Notice that statement in the last part about uh, the gospel hasn't told you everything. That's because paper was short and time was short and because it took a long time to get some of these messages across. Now, most of us have heard this lesson for years, and we still haven't absorbed it. It's written in a very concise way as if the disciples jumped up and got the whole point of it all that morning. I don't think so, because I don't think they were any less human than we are, or any more godlike than we are, either one. Because I think Jesus came into that room and knew for sure that his audience would be as terrified as I would be. I think that's a fact. We too would be very terrified if we had intended an execution on Friday night and the dead person walked in here this morning. The crucifixion and Jesus appeared are two of the most frightening events I can imagine. We are trained to call this Happy Easter time. Go to the store and count all the cards on the Easter rack and find out how many of them say happy but you don't find it here. We do not even let ourselves think about what a frightening event this would have been. To have a crucified or executed person walk into the room and say, peace be with you. I don't think anybody said happy Easter that first morning. But I don't suppose that you would go to the store and buy a card that said, don't be scared on Easter. I think it was Jesus' first Easter greeting, because his first Easter Easter greeting was, peace, don't be scared. Don't be afraid. Well, I don't know about you, but telling me that don't be afraid doesn't really stop my fear. It's likely, I say likely, because we do it right here. Right now, the disciples and friends wallow in blame when things go wrong. The disciples in those days, I'm sure, remember, they had to record this in short space. I am sure, because I know human beings, that they were walking around saying to them, why do we let Jesus die? I mean, I, for one crazy reason, ask myself, why did I let Karen die? Which must sound absurd to you. Why did I let Karen die? I asked myself that over and over until I had to call a friend and have him tell him how dumb I was. 
I'm thinking the disciples were just as absurd as I have been and just as absurd as all of us have been when this has happened to us. I'm sure that if we were the disciples of Jesus, we'd have been saying things like, if we'd have just taught Judas to stop robbing, if we'd have just taught him to be honest so he wouldn't betray, or if we'd have taken Jesus to some other garden besides this one so the Romans couldn't find him, we could have saved him. And they wouldn't have been able to trace him down. And then we go on and on about it. Like I'm sure those folks from the cross have been going on, making it their own fault, or, which is even nicer sometimes, making someone else to blame. I do that too. You can tell their fear is real because two days later, they still locked themselves in the upper room. They were fearful of the Romans and the Jews. But I think they locked the biggest blame inside their own spirits inside that room. They couldn't get one, rid of the one that they blamed. They not only felt guilty, they were guilty. And they don't get off the hook by laying it on Je Judas. We are all betrayers of Jesus Christ. It's not likely that this is a very unhuman situation. Maybe even in Ukraine, we wait for, and I'm sorry, I'm rotten, and we say the West should be saving the Ukrainians, but we're not the West, someone else should do it. I should have saved you, Jesus, and the Ukrainians are so who's gonna save us? But Jesus just walks in and says, peace be with you. By the way, have you been picturing a shiny, clean Jesus like saw on the Christmas or Easter cards? Nowhere does it say that in this one either. But if a bloody Jesus with a hole in his side were to walk in here and say, peace with, G with you, what would happen to your spirit? What would you do with that? And the week goes by and the hole is still there because Thomas gets to see it. And guilt and fear mingle with peace be with you. No way could any of us process all of this that happened on Easter in a week. We've been processing Easter for a lifetime. Do you experience peace be with you on a regular basis? Thomas, I, don't, I get it. He wants to see this for himself. He wants to see that Jesus is alive. It's been decades since I used to fall for condemning the doubting Thomas. I stopped falling for it when I realized I was Thomas. By seeing Jesus as alive kicks Thomas into action. And please take that point real. When Jesus says, peace be to you, what he's really saying is, get moving. Love your neighbor. Act on this peace. Don't go home and say, oh, good for me. That's a challenge about this whole lesson that isn't a bit easy to take. It like reminds me what it's like to get up after major surgery and have to walk down the hall when the nurse pushing you in the back saying, get moving, and you believe your whole body's going to fall apart. And that Jesus says, peace be with you. I was really upset many years ago when I had to put my very closest friend and college roommate on a jet plane that was about to eventually land in Vietnam. There was no peace in Vietnam then. I watched his plane rise over the Verdugo Mountains north of Burbank, California, and as the plane went over the mountain on that January Sunday morning, I'm standing there wondering what on earth in Vietnam could possibly be worth his life. Nothing. I'm going to visit him on the Sabbath, in by Sabbath. I've never had to miss him. I've never had to deal with his life worth but the, it changed my life to see that that day. The disciples, you see, remember, let's go back to them, were only on the second day of this gut-wrenching grief of missing their friend and of their guilt over that. Sending my dear friend off to Vietnam after we had spent the day before in, in Disneyland was mind-bogglingly hard to deal with. And it led what at the time was a seemingly minor change in my life I have forever since signed my letters, peace. 
It was a way for me to remind myself every time I do it, and I've written about 60 letters in the past month and a half, to make hope a statement of peace from me. I do mean to be passing on that peace. The peace that Jesus walked into the room and offered that day. I felt no peace that morning, but I claimed the task of seeking peace because I had to leave that airport and teach a bunch of teenagers Sunday school, and they didn't know what hit them. You get it, I hope, that Jesus had to fill us with peace before we could ever begin to share that peace anywhere. Now, my hope for peace has evolved. In 1968, I wanted peace for all armies, especially in Vietnam. And I never did find a reason for worth Mel's death or anyone else's. And that seemingly minor change of signing my letters was the first step in a deep change in my faith. One that has taught me to really hear Jesus' story, peace be with you. It sounds like all the good news that I need and it surely is a summary of the good news that I need, but it's also a challenge. If peace is going to be with me, I have to act peacefully. And that's the profound point. I'm not as peaceful as you might admire, or believe, or think. And I do not state without reservation that Jesus was saying, peace be with you to all humankind, not just to you and me. And I state without reservation that that inner peace cannot carry us through wars and it cannot carry us until we act on it. Wars last beyond fighting. I just read a number the other day that tells me what that's like. In Iraq, the war is supposed to be over. There are seven million landmines still in place. That is not peace. Fighting may stop wars, but it takes centuries to truly end. What if the new flood of refugees coming to this country were Vietnamese instead of Ukrainians? Check your reaction. But I want to tell you what centering on peace all these years since 1968 has aided me in what I try to do. It's changed my preaching. It's changed my understanding of citizenship. It changed my attitude towards parenting and grandparenting. It gave me the possibility of giving caring, peaceful last days on this earth. It changes my hope for Gethsemane. And it sprang from the new words of the joy of Mary Frank when she told us about April's community meal, that peace was coming. Peace has helped me be a part of Al-Anon. And it will go with me as I figure out how to live beyond Karen. My sister-in-law just wrote and told me, you're strong, that's why she knew she could leave. I am, and I will, but I'm strong because I've been committed to peace be with you. It seems like the disciples didn't hear the gift of peace, but they only had a week. How much time have we had? Jesus went on to show them their wounds. Have you wondered if that accomplished anything? Of course it did. That's how come we know the story. I used to think it was Jesus was giving those wounds because it was kind of like forensic evidence to show that he'd really been crucified. And that's probably part of it. But I think he had another reason for uncovering his wounds. He was telling them, I am standing here wounded in peace. When I think about the unusual reaction to the body wounds, it's something between yuck and turning our heads. We don't want to see it. In fact, people get annoyed when we show them our wounds, don't they? So how did the sight of the wounds convince the people to accept the peaceful words? Of course, it seems to work with Thomas, the hands and the wounds and all. But even Thomas then had to say, my Lord and my God, which was a faithful statement, but he had to go out and live it. As Thomas has accepted this gift of peace, so must we. You might think that peace be with you was just a standard greeting like hello or happy Easter, but it isn't. 
It's the profound word of God. That's because we're all in deep need of that peace, right? Down here in the depths, the offer of the peace is welcome as all get out. Your mind may have added a strict tone to Jesus' words. You may have read this as bawling Thomas out for weak or no faith. I don't think so. It's not strength of our faith that lets us accept peace. It's actually the opposite. It's surrender. It's surrender of who I am to let God bring peace into me. And nations, as a nation, it's our surrender of us trying to have advantage over our neighbor that it finally brings peace. So I would pose to you that peace in the spirit is essential to the new Easter life we're trying to live. The one thing was Jesus was no longer afraid of dying and death. Oh, how I seek the same, but I'm not there. But for me, it starts with peace in my spirit, just little bits of it. For some years, I thought that the peace Christ offered was not the same as peace in Vietnam or Ukraine or even New Hampshire. But I now hear the same peace in my spirit in Vietnam, in Ukraine, in New Hampshire, in Gethsemane, in all the places on earth, in your homes and in mine. For there can be no peace in the world without peace in the human soul. And no peace in our spirits without peace on earth, goodwill to all. Isn't it fascinating that Jesus started life on this earth with the angels saying, goodwill to all, peace on earth, and ended life with peace on earth, peace, goodwill to you. Never forget that. For we, the church, cannot see ourselves as islands of peace, but rather vehicles of peace. I think Jesus starts out with this verbal gift of peace to begin that process of belief as he speaks to Thomas, as he speaks to me, as he speaks to you. In my spirit anyway, belief is nearly impossible until it's rooted in active faith and peace, all forms of peace. So as a sidebar, it's essential that you think hard just what it means to believe, and I hope that you get it, that it means we act on our peace that you discard a huge percentage of what you've been taught. I was taught that my faith was in Luther's catechism, and I had to use those statements of faith. Nothing wrong with Luther's catechism. He didn't think it was his faith either. He said we had to live it, that faith without works was dead. Amen. The hymn of the day is ELW number 363.
We'll now share in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I want you to concentrate as, you th as we go through it on the third article, especially on the part about the communion of saints and the forgiveness of sins. For in those two lines comes peace be with you. I believe in God, God the Father God Almighty, Almighty, creator of, of heaven, heaven and earth. earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again, and he ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Prayers of intercession for April 24th. Gathered as God's chosen people, and in celebration of our baptism, the feast of salvation, and the glorious resurrection of Christ, let us pray for the church the world, and all people according to their needs. Hmm. O Lord, grant us the power and wisdom to obey you before any human authority. Our secular leaders, so often we ask you to help our secular leaders so that they may not lead us astray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord Jesus, you stand in the midst of the lamp, stands your churches, filling them with imperishable light. Thank you for rescuing us from the darkness of sin. Thank you for dispelling clouds of grief, grief and despair. Thank you for leading us into eternal and everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Save and defend your church universal, purchased with your precious blood, dear Lord. Strengthen it through word and sacrament. Give your church faithful leadership. Bless your church wherever it is persecuted, and by their patient witness, turn their enemies from hatred to repentance. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You give us your peace, O Lord. We rest comfortably in it. Help us to share that peace with all with whom we meet and work and live. Bring peace to where there is no peace. Bring an end to war, terrorism, and religious and ethnic persecution. We pray especially for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine suffering unmercifully at the hands of the Russian invaders. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give wisdom, courage, and integrity to our military and first responders and to all who serve the causes of liberty, peace, and justice throughout the world. Fill them with a love for your good and gracious will. Use them to establish justice, safety, and hope in places sorely lacking in those good things. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have blessed the earth. <clears throat> you made it few fruitful that it might bring forth abundantly all that is needed for life. Bless the farmers and fishermen, the cattlemen and ranchers whose work feeds us all. Grant favorable weather to all, dear Lord, for sowing, growth, and harvest, for recreation and for travel. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord of abundance, you have generously given to each of us gifts unique for your purpose. Make us aware of those gifts, especially when we doubt ourselves. Make us to be broken bread and poured out wine that we might give back to you what you have first given us and that we may feed those hungering for your word and slake the thirst of those seeking your love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all those in need, O oh Lord. The sick and the dying, the homeless and unemployed. 
those on our prayer list, especially Marsha Jornet, Alice Belusha, Elaine Murphy, Crystal Bluto, Marjorie Judd, Mary Scarlett, Henry Burrard, and my dear friend Penny McGarry and her family. And, all, and also we lift up to you those we name in our hearts and on our lips. Thank you for the saints who have gone before us to show us the way. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, grant us, merciful Father. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Share the peace and then be seated. Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts, that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Okay. <laughs> it's indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, holy God. So we ask you in this day, of this Easter, when you remind us again that you have brought us peace, 
to give us the power to accept it in your body and in your blood. We praise your name and join an unending hymn. <laughs> In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you, do this to remember me. After supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. It shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. If you're with us at home and live stream, take your, your uh, <coughs> cup out and join us. <clears throat> Turn the top over so that the bread is up, peel the little lid off, take out the bread. This is the body of Christ given for you. Now turn your cup over. Again, carefully remove that seal. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Uh, the sending hymn is ELW 376. <laughs>
the good news. Serve one another. Thanks be to God.